Well, Junior was an apostle, so there. Greetings, I'm JC Pilter, and this is JCPC Apologetic. What's wrong with you people? Well, hello guys, and welcome to another Monday and another video and another episode of Bad Arguments. Today, we're dealing with a very popular argument amongst the egalitarians, and that is Junia was an apostle. Now, the uh, I, I'm there's so many different areas that I could use to approach this, uh, many that I've dealt with before, for example. This is uh, one of those taking an unclear text and using it to override a clear text. I've talked about when you have two texts that you're dealing with, one of them's clear as crystal, and the next one, it, you're not exactly sure what it's saying. You go with what the one that's clear as crystal says. What does the one that's clear as crystal say? It says that women are not to speak in the church. Uh, they are not to be pastors. Why? Because God made Adam first and because the woman was deceived. That's what Paul said. It's plain as day, clear as crystal. You can't misunderstand that passage. But this passage about Junia, it's a very unclear passage. Um, second of all, I will state the obvious. I thought we were talking about pastors here. Why all of a sudden are we asking questions about apostles? Now, with that said, I could uh, agree to an extent that uh, you know apostles did you know seem to be pastors. All that we see seem to have been pastors. Now, with that said, we also got to define what an apostle is because the Bible uses several different terms to refer to apostle. The word apostle is simply the Greek word for messenger. If uh, you heard that, you know, the word apostle used in scripture, you can literally just, you know, put messenger in there and that's what it would mean in Greek. But of course, you know, Christianity didn't come with its own terminology. They had to use the Greek language to make terminology for their people. So when you read the word apostle in the New Testament, the translators had something to deal with. Were they talking about a messenger or were they talking about the apostles? Now, if we're talking about the apostles, guess what, guys? There's only 12. Um, that are, you know, that, that, that was the position that was the, uh, the position that held authority. There were only 12 apostles. They died. We still are an apostolic church in the sense that we follow the teachings of the apostles. That is the word of God, but there are no more apostles today. Now you could use the little a apostle as people like to say, uh, definition of apostle, uh, because we see other people described as apostles in the New Testament, but those guys were simply messengers. Uh, messengers, guess what, are not pastors. Now, I suspect many of the messengers were. If you were bringing a message from this church to that church, you probably got up and you uh, proclaimed it in the pulpit. Maybe, I don't know. We don't know that. That's just me isolating. I mean, we don't know what ap uh, the apostles, as far as messengers, did. Many of them probably were pastors. But to say that because some little a apostles, messengers, were pastors, therefore all messengers were apostles, that's, you know, or, or were preachers, that's a non sequitur. You are reading something else, or that doesn't logically follow. You're reading that into the text. Yes, I, I understand that there were many little a apostles, little messengers, doesn't necessarily mean that they were all pastors. So to assume that because Junia is described in the scriptures as being chief among the apostles, one, you're going way too far in saying that she was one of the 12 because she, he was not. Two, you're making the assumption that Junia um, was, you know, if she was, if he, she was a, a little apostle, that they therefore was a preacher. You can't make that argument. So this argument breaks down because of just the logical failings of it, but there's also another way in which it breaks down. The fact is the name Junia that we have described in the Bible, this person may not have been a woman. 
Junia is a feminine sounding name, certainly from our standpoint, but Junia is one of those names, name like we have, you know, we have many of them, um, name like, take the name Casey, Casey, if you hear of a person named Casey, unless you meet that person or hear them described, you don't know if that is a man or a woman because the name could be used for either one. Um, we have many names like that. And certainly Greek has those type of names too. Junia, uh, sometimes translated Junius, could be either one. We honestly do not know if Junia was a man or a woman. You go to the, uh, you know, way back in time to the early, you know, the church fathers, they seem confused on whether or not Junia was a man or a woman. We have translations today that seem to suggest he's, that it's a man or a woman, but there is nothing within the text that tells you whether this person is a man, man or a woman. Regardless of whether or not Junia is a man or a woman, we know he's not a capital A apostle because there were only 12. Um, so it would have to be a lower, you know, little a messenger type. Um, and we, by the way, we do this with other things in the New Testament too. The term deacon um, is just the word for servant. So many times when there are translations of the word servant, you have to wonder, are we dealing with the office of deacon or are we dealing with the person who's just a servant? I mean, you know, Paul says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. It's literally Paul, a deacon of Jesus Christ. Was Paul a deacon? No, he was not a deacon. He was a missionary. He was an apostle. He was a uh, he was a a pastor, you might say, but he was not a deacon. Um, so we when this this is kind of the difficulty that translators have to deal with uh, figuring out: Are we talking about the office of apostle? Or are we talking about the little a messenger type apostle? Well, in this case, clearly we're dealing with the messenger type. And it does not follow that Junia, even if Junia was a man, was a pastor. You can't make that argument because we do not know that. Um, one final thing I will mention is, going back to translation again, we don't even know that Junia, Junius, was an actual apostle. You say, what? Yes. Studies doing, you know, going into Greek and how it operates, sometimes it's not easy to translate. You know, uh, one thing that I was always found very interesting is when I was working with Ugandans, hearing them try to translate certain phrases into English, you know, sometimes it was just like easy. They would just pop it off the top of their head. And then other times they were, it was a real struggle and they would have to get together and try to figure out, okay, how do you translate this into English? Some things do not translate well or easily from one language to another. That is a fact. Anybody who knows more than one language understands that. Um, but in the case of this passage, it doesn't necessarily say that Junia was an apostle. It seems to say chief among the apostles in the sense of they were well known among the apostles. Well, that's a very different meaning. Um, you know, in that case, it may be actually referring to the 12. Yeah, Junia or Junius is well known amongst the 12, but it doesn't mean that he is part of the 12. So when, if you, if you haven't picked up on it, this is a, um, very unclear passage. It's a passage that could mean many different things, but even the best rendering, the most liberal rendering of this passage, isn't that Junia was a woman among the 12 preaching. You can't get there from here. The bottom line is to get Junia to be a woman in a preaching role requires eisegesis and some non sequiturs, some very bad translation. And one thing, this is not a end all of an argument, but it's one that really catches my attention. And that is the moment a person defending a position or an interpretation of scripture goes the conspiratorial route, I automatically hold them as suspect. Whenever you hear a charismatic or a liberal tran uh, translating this passage and they, you know, say that Junia was a woman who was, you know, one of the 12 or an apostle, little a apostle, because most of the time charismatics will say that little a apostles are super pastors or something weird like that. You know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not just messengers. They, they have a special role, a special office, and they can never define what that office is, but it always involves preaching because they really want to make uh, Junia into a pastor. Of course, you can't get there from the text, but they'll try. But what you always see is they always want to go 
the conspiratorial route. Well, there was this secret group of men who could not stand to have a woman as a pastor. So when they saw the name Junia in scripture, they changed it to Junius. It's a conspiracy. Oh yeah, where is this conspiracy in history? Where's the 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 uh, you know paperwork? Where's the receipts? Where's the history of this? Hey, you know, Bishop so and so of Antioch to Bishop so and so of Rome. We cannot tolerate a woman in the office of pastor or apostle. And there was this junia in scripture. Let how are we going to deal with this? Well, let us uh, translate it as junius and change it to a man. Where, where is that in scripture? You, you, or scripture, history. You don't see it. It's not there. Uh, I, I've always said, and I, I have another video, Bad Arguments video, that dealt with this and said, basically, just because you can make an alternate explanation as to how something is does not mean that that explanation is the reason. I could make an explanation as to anything. Uh, you know, I, you, you can make a fantasy version of history. But it doesn't prove that that fantasy version of history is true. You know, I could I could say it's possible that in reality we don't actually exist. We're you know all a bunch of brains and jars, and we are being played with by scientists. And everything that we see and experience is actually not real, but just some you know some reaction that's happening in the little brains that we have in jars. You know, you could make that case. Does that mean it's true? Well, no. You need to go out and prove that that's actually happening. That's what's happening very often when people use Junia as an excuse as to why, you know, as to her being, or him, being a pastor or an apostle. They go the conspiratorial route. This group of evil men trying to put women down came up with it. Well, where's this history of the evil men putting down the women? You can't find it. It's not there. So, I'm sorry. It makes a nice little story in your worldview, it would support your worldview, but it just does not exist, guys. We have to deal with the evidence we have. We have to deal with the facts that we have. And the fact is, in conclusion, Junia or Junius may have been a man, may have been a woman, was not one of the 12, may have been a messenger, but probably was not, was most likely just a well-known person by the 12, and any way you spin it, may or may not have been a pastor, but we cannot know. This passage is so cl unclear, it's only one verse, and the fact is this Junia individual is only mentioned once. It, you know, it comes in one of those portions where Paul is basically saying, greet this person, greet that person, you know, saying, uh, acknowledging certain well, you know, you know, well uh, respected people in the church at the end of his letters. It wasn't meant to be a big theological statement about, you know, women being pastors. Um, and so that's all we know about this person. And what we know is very unclear, very uncertain. And for you to try to say that that overthrows the clear and the certain teachings of scripture, that's when it's clear that you're starting from the foundation of my position is correct. Women must be pastors. Therefore, I'm going to believe that this means that because my assumption must be true. You're not an honest dealer with the facts. You are coming up with a conclusion and then trying to find evidence for it. Proof text texting. That's a surefire way to end up in error. Guys, proof texting, not good. Now, as I said, that Junia text is a very unclear text, um, but there are some texts that are very clear. We believe in the, and I'm going to try to say this word right, but I always struggle and get tongue-tied when I say it, the perspicuity of Scripture. I don't even know if I said it right there. But basically, it's the doctrine, the notion that Scripture is understandable. It's easy. Well, not always easy to understand, but it's clear. It's understandable. It's not some uh, nebulous thing out there that we can never come to the truth on, which is what is popular amongst professing Christians today. The Scriptures are clear and knowable. And what is clear and knowable above anything in the scripture is how a person can go from death to life, how a person can go from being an enemy of God to being a friend of God, from being saved or unsaved to being saved. We call it the gospel. And if you do not know what the gospel is, I recommend that you click on this video that I'm going to leave linked after this one's over. And it's called simply what is the gospel. I'm going to leave it a little uh, box there in the corner. And I'm also going to leave a link down in the description so it's easy for you to find. 
click on that guy, check it out. I recommend that you uh, uh, hear it because if you are not a Christian, we pray that by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will be saved today. And if you're a believer, that you'll be confirmed, that you'll be encouraged in the faith, or maybe that your faith will be shaken, that you will find that you have been in church and not be saved. There are many people who go through church life and at some point in time realize, wait, I was never a believer. Oh, I was in church doing the church thing, but I never believed the gospel. I never heard the gospel. A lot of churches never present the gospel. They just assume, oh, if he's in church, he's saved. But you can't make that assumption. So I recommend that you click on that video, check it out. And by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that some will be saved and that others will be encouraged. But either way, God bless. Have a great day. And we'll see you next time. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below and feel free to like and share it so others can see it as well. Also, subscribe so that you can keep up to date on future videos. And as always, please check below to see resources that I've used that might help you further your studies. God bless and have a great day.